Blair's communication chiefs claims about Iraq mass destruction weapons were fake. As was Pulitzer Prize winner Judith Miller's reportage, but the showing war was unfortunately real. The Gulf of Tonkin incident, which threw the US more directly into the Vietnam War, was fiction, but the following war also was real. In early 2011, while Arab Spring was spreading, what was happening in Bahrain would have never been aired, had it not been for former CNN correspondent Amber Lyon, who defied a former employee to speak about Bahrain abusive and thuggish regime attempt to snuff out the democracy movement. Here we had a war which should not be told to the people, not to upset a US-backed kingdom. Is it always the government's fault, with their spin doctors that pass the fake news to the press to manipulate the people or hide info governments do not like? According to Smith, spin doctors have been destroying democracy for 30 years by embracing of marketing techniques such as sound bites. Politicians have changed their relationships with the electorate for the worse. For marketing techniques also had the result of treating buyers of products and services not as customers to be respected, but as objects to be exploited. Marketing techniques have been used by banks mis-selling financial products on an enormous scale and creating disaster. Smith is blaming the political class, but is it really only the politicians' fault? Or do the media cooperate with them in manipulating the people? Brexit was marketed by the media as the greatest disaster that could have ever happened to the country, while in fact Britain's economy had been at its peak since he left the EU. Was it by chance that mainstream media were all against Brexit? Maybe because, as Farage put it, the EU needed to deny that its currency is failing and that the EU has been imposed to the people. The EU is a champion in the lack of respect for its citizens because the E seems to be allergic to democracy. Here's some evidence. 250,000 people marched in Berlin against TTIP which with its ISDS provision would wipe out the power of states to protect their people against corporations' economic interests. When EU Trade Commissioner Cecilia Marstrom was asked what she thought about the demonstration in Berlin and the fact that a record three and a quarter million European citizens had signed a petition against it, she openly admitted that her mandate does not come from the people. Hence, there is no reason why she should worry about people's will. When Varoufakis, Greek reformer finance minister, tried to save Greece from other harsh measures against its already suffering citizens, he had to face what he called complete lack of any democratic scruples on behalf of the supposed defenders of Europe's democracy. Schauble confirmed that no country's democratic elections can change any EU programs and the Eurogroup, which does not exist in law and it is nowhere to be found on any treaties, has the greatest power to determine the lives of Europeans. It's not answerable to anyone, given it doesn't exist in law. No minutes are kept and it's confidential, so no citizen ever knows what is said within. These are decisions of almost life and death, and no member has to answer to anybody. That does not sound anything similar to democracy, does it? So, where will the lies of widespread anti-Brexit blackmailing campaigns necessary to hide a possible better life outside the Union? As confirmed by Bill Lee in the Howard Business Review, the devastating effects of belonging to the Euro area are clear and undeniable. What about another unexpected success against the political establishment over the ocean, such as the election of Trump? Sociopath media behave like the pot calling the kettle black, blaming the election on social network lies and Russian propaganda. 
The elite have tried all they could against the hated populists with the help of mainstream media, as we can see from John Journalist's reaction to Clinton's defeat. Italian correspondent in the USA, Botteri, has clearly vented their worries about the future of mainstream media, unable to manipulate the people, and her remark has been echoed by MSNCB host Brzezinski, who has openly declared that the journalist's job is to control exactly what people think. Has the destruction of the reliability of mainstream media been the Spain's doctor's fault or the mainstream media's? Since Brexit, the referendum in Italy and Trump's elections, the victory of the so-called populist forces, seem to have bothered the elite really a lot. Even basic principles of democracy have been questioned. As Professor Ricolfi has written, there was no lack of proposal of drastic limitation to suffrage. All the uneducated people should not have the right to vote unless they vote in the right way. So a new crusade against social media started spreading from across the Atlantic. The need to silence social media which do not respond to the orders of the establishment, or maybe we should say have not allowed mainstream media to steer the people's will, as Botteri as Brzezinski told us they should. So Charles Kopchan, one of the most influential thinker of the American establishment, former President Obama's advisor, has proposed the solution to fight together with the EU against the Trump's victory and save the globalization people are not happy with. He said the constraints of media together with legislators, courts, public opinion and activism must be fully exercised. What does it mean to exercise the media? It doesn't say certain media, it seems to mean all the media. It looks like we have another confirmation that the establishment has total power of control on the media. No wonder that according to Kupcha, it's the EU, with its allergy to democracy, which should be the champion of this new crusade. It is interesting that Kupchan's article has appeared on many European newspapers. EU Parliament has recently launched a non-legislative resolution to fight what they define as Kremlin, induced propaganda. It should enhance information literature so that what they consider the European intellectually defenseless citizens could be protected from anti-EU propaganda from the East. The EU has already launched an initiative that limits freedom of expression on social media, which has produced its effect. Wilders, who has voiced people's worry for increased Moroccan immigration in the Netherlands, has been condemned for hate speech. Professor Ricolfi underlines the fact that the fear of immigrants has become a crime for the illiberal and not very illuminate EU bureaucrats who live in protected areas ignoring the threats immigrants have posed, as proved by statistics, like the research by the David Hume Foundation, which proves in turn that the average crime rate for foreigners is, as a mean, four times higher than for natives. Forcing often dangerous hospitality has been the only way to face real problems. Another way of reacting to possible dangers posed by immigrants has been to main vocabulary. Italian judge Flamini has ruled the world clandestine as insulted and fined the political party Lega Nord for some posters. Doesn't it ring a bell? Sign, the philologist in 1984 says, it is a beautiful thing the destruction of words. The association who charged the political party with hate speech for having used the now forbidden word and entitled to a compensation has been found to have a special relationship with the judge, so Flamini is now under investigation. Are we in for a controllable information circulation? Must social media be silenced because they unveil mainstream lies? When to fool people, mainstream media use fake pictures and the social spot them. It's not nice, is it? The picture of the march against Trump was a fake, and it was the picture of some soldiers, Italian Minister of Interior Pinotti, said were helping in the area struck by the earthquake of last January. Russian revision of a contradicting law which punished a member of a family who slaps another member with criminal charge, while the same offense done by your neighbor is not a crime, becomes a legalization of domestic violence for Russophobic EU mainstream media. 
Italy is trying to pass a law proposed by MP Gambo, which would fine and send to prison anyone who in the internet wrote fake news, without defining what a fake news is. The law has been attacked by Professor Zicardio of Milan University, who has called the proposal liberticidal and aiming to control dissent, and journalist Ayanna Ciccone, founder of the Journalism Festival in Perugia, who has stressed the danger for freedom, saying that the proposed law tries to gag the web in order to use it to diffuse all mainstream consensus. Of course, mainstream media fakes do not have to worry, they can continue undisturbed, especially if social media which are ready to spot them are silenced. If dictatorial democracy is when you have the right to speech, but the government does not listen. What type of democracy is it when you do not even have the right to speak anymore? Everything changes, but something does not. It is the disdain of elites for the people, which nowadays seem even stronger than ever, thanks to a globalized society run by multinationals and undemocratic organisms.